Let's try to graph a few linear equations that are written in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form, you'll recall, looks like y equals mx plus b, which is the form ours is written in, where the m tells you the slope of the line and the b value tells you the y-intercept of the line. And so for our line, 5 is the y-intercept and negative 3 halves is the slope or the tilt of, of the line. So if you remember the steps of how to graph a line written in slope-intercept form, it goes something like this. You start by plotting the y-intercept. So we'll start by plotting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we know that the graph goes through that point on the y-axis. And then we're going to use the slope, use the fact that m equals negative 3 over 2, to plot a few additional points. Now how do we do that knowing that this is the slope? Well what this means is that between one point and another the the ratio of the vertical movement or, or the rise as we call it compared to the horizontal movement between the points which is what we'll call the run is a ratio of negative three to two. And so what that means is between one point to another you might go down three units on the y-axis as you go right two units on the x-axis. So if we go down one, two, three, right one, two, then we'll be right here. And so we've gone down three, right two. So between these two points, the slope between these two points is negative three halves. And matter of fact, we can even do that again. We can go down one, two, three units and go right one, two units more and we'll be down here and you can do it again and again and again and you notice that these are going to start lining up in a straight line and to get the graph of this linear equation all we have to do is simply connect these dots so let, let's do that so let's say we had a line something kind of like this and we're done this yellow line is the graph of this linear equation so you plot the y-intercept then you use the slope to find a few additional points. All right, now just to finish up this example before we go to the next one, uh, what I've done here is I went ahead and graphed this guy in my calculator and you notice it looks exactly like our graph. Now the scaling might be off because of the units that I chose for the x and y axis, but you'll notice that the graph is actually the same thing. If you look right here, it crosses the y axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 was our y-intercept. And then from one point to another, you can go down 1, 2, 3 units while going right 1, 2 units. And sure enough, the ratio of the rise to the run would be down 3 as you move to the right 2. And just that ratio has to be maintained. Like you could go down 6 if you went to the right 4, for example, but the ratio of the rise to the run will be uh, a ratio of negative 3 to 2. Let's try another example. Let's say we had 2x minus 5y equals 10. This is a, a very common problem. This guy is not written in y-intercept or slope-intercept form yet. So we might have to put it in slope-intercept form by solving for y. So let's, let's do that. So this guy we could write negative 5y equals negative 2x plus 10 where I subtracted the 2x to the right. And then the last thing to solve for y I think we'd have to divide both sides by negative 5. When we do that I think these will cancel and so we'll get y equals this big fraction. I think I'd rather break this apart into two fractions negative 2x divided by negative 5 is positive 2 fifths x because the negative over over the negative cancels and then plus 10 over negative 5 which is minus 2. So here's um, here's the equation same equation as the original one but this one is written in slope intercept form. So we'll do the things we know we should do we'll we'll start with the y intercept at negative 2 and then from here we're going to go up 2 as we go right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
And if you wanted to, you could go up two more, five right more, up two more, five right more, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm kind of running out of space, so I think I'll just use these two points. And the graph will look something kind of like this. The, this is the graph that goes between these two points right here. So this is a graph that represents this particular linear equation that we have right here. I also went ahead and graphed this one as well and notice these graphs look identical. Here's mine in blue and here's this one done on the calculator and they're, they're pretty pretty spot on. Uh, as you'll of course realize uh, this guy really does have a y-intercept of negative 2. If you look back here the, um, the y-intercept was negative 2 and the slope was 2 fifths. And so from this y-intercept, you could go up 1, 2, and to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so with a slope of 2 fifths, you would get an additional point on the line. And when we connect those dots, we get the graph of the line. All right, last one. Last one. This one's kind of a strange one just because it looks a little different. We have y equals x over 2. Now, a couple of things. One, I, I don't clearly see an m. And second of all, I don't see a B value at all. Well, really, there, there is one there, but we just might have to write it in a particular way. This X, if you have a term in the numerator, you can pull that off the numerator, and we could write this as 1 half X. So X over 2 and 1 half X are the same. Just think about it. If you had 6 divided by 2, that's 3. But what's half of 6? Well, that's also 3, of course. So these are the same. And then if you don't have a, a B, no, no big deal. Let's put plus zero, because there's no, no B value listed. So this is in slope intercept form now. The one half is the M, and the zero is the B. So as we've been doing, we'll start with a Y intercept of zero, and then we'll use this slope to get an additional point. We'll go up one over two, get a point, maybe go up one more over two more. And you can do that again and again and again, and you'll just get more and more points on your line. So just to wrap this one up, we'll connect these dots. Maybe something kind of like that. Uh, notice this is kind of an interesting one because the line actually goes through the origin, which we kind of knew that because the y-intercept was zero. But nevertheless, this would be the equation of that particular line right there. Now I also went ahead and graphed this line as well. I'll see if I can squeeze this one in right here. Um, here's the graph of y equals x over 2 on a calculator and you notice that they line up perfectly. They both go through the origin, they both have the correct slope, and again it's, it's just so nice that we can graph these linear equations so quickly just by having the slope with the y-intercept.